we, this has been well trailed. This has been a, a chronicle of a death foretold for, for some months now. And I think it, effectively it's pretty much what Ollie Robbins and Sabine Veyron agreed uh, a, a, few, a few weeks back anyway. Uh, we're going to stay in the customs union on this deal. We're going to stay effectively in large parts of the, of the single market. And uh, that means it's vassal state stuff. Uh, we are going to, for the first time in a thousand years, uh, this place, this parliament, uh, will not have a say over the laws that govern this country. It is a quite incredible state of affairs. It will mean that we are having to accept rules and regulations from Brussels over which we have no say ourselves. It is utterly unacceptable to anybody who believes in democracy. It is not the right way forward. And there is a kicker. And the kicker is that not only are we going to remain in the customs union and in large parts of the single market, uh, but also we will not have protected our precious union. Because if you look at what they've agreed today, and again we must caveat this and say you look at the reports, then it is also accepted that there must be customs and regulatory checks down the Irish Sea between Great Britain and Northern Ireland, which currently do not exist. And for the first time since partition, Dublin, under these proposals, would have more say in some aspects of the government of Northern Ireland than London. So I don't see how you can support it from a democratic point of view. I don't see how a unionist uh, can support it. And I don't see how you can support it if you believe in the political and economic freedom of this country. So, so what, if you ask my question, am I going to vote against it? The answer is yes. Yeah, I think we gathered that. Okay. Uh, what about the rest of the cabinet, your c former cabinet colleagues? What's your message to them? Well, I, you know, I hope that they consider it carefully and obviously you know we'll have to see exactly what uh, it is and and have to look at the terms but it's pretty it's been extensively trailed uh, and I, I think that the right thing for them to do would be to advise the Prime Minister that this would not be acceptable uh, to the House of Commons or to the British people because it patently fails to fulfill the mandate given by the British people in in June 2016 so I think it's time to you know and there is bags of time but it's what's time to your alternative? Go. The alternative has been well set out by uh, plenty of people in the last uh, couple of years, not least the Prime Minister herself. When uh, at Lancaster House on January the 17th, 2017, uh, she set out a very attractive vision for a free trade deal, a Canada-style free trade deal, uh, coupled with all sorts of other intergovernmental arrangements and partnerships, which I think would be incredibly attractive to the people of this country and, and to the, our friends and partners in the European Union. And that's the way forward. Except people have said that doesn't solve this issue of well, not having border checks. I, I, I think that, the, as, as, uh, as you will have heard people say many times before, uh, I think that the issue of the, of the border uh, at, uh, in, in Northern Ireland has been escalated quite deliberately in order to produce this perverse result that the whole of the UK ends up remaining within the customs union and in the single market, thereby effectively frustrating the result of the referendum and the verdict of the people and basically making a nonsense of Brexit. So I hope the Cabinet uh, will do the right thing and I hope they chuck it out.